So most of you know that a router is one of the most underrated workshop tool that you can have. It's useful for shaping the edges on your board and with a straight edge guide you can even do a lot of accurate and repeatable trimming and grooving jobs as well. The problem you may have is if you want to cut a groove in the middle of the board or say 20 centimeters away from the edge. The straight edge guide that comes with your router only has a reach of around 10 centimeters or so and that will not be able to do this. What would be great is to mimic the action of a track saw, that is the saw runs on the track and similarly, if the router can run on the track, then you can cut grooves anywhere. In this video, we'll see how I created this jig so that it can enable your router to run on a track. You probably guessed the design already in less than 5 seconds, but this is how it glides. The jig is loosely based on Bosch's FSN OFA router adapter, which I believe is loosely based on Star Trek's USS Enterprise. I first saw this Bosch one in action on a track in one of Matt Eslia's workbench build, and I have always eyed to DIY that adapter at some point. And guess what? That time has now come. To build this jig, you only need a very few parts, a track, a mild steel flat bar which is 4mm thick, few washers and a scrap piece of 18mm plywood. To cut the steel flat bar, I swapped my existing blade to the stock Evolution multipurpose carbide blade that can also cut into steel. So the plan is to cut the bars into 18cm. So I set the stop at 18 centimeters and clamped it in place. It goes without saying that make sure you wear your PPE while cutting steel, especially eye protection. Now in my design I've cut 5 pieces of steel but would have them positioned at only 4 places as shown here. The outer one is doubled up with 2 and that is to raise the height to compensate for the thickness of the track. The next steel bar is on the rubber glide strip on the track. The remaining 2 flanges on the ridge of the track and it is these 2 that hold the adapter perfectly at a 90 degree to the track. Now let's also talk about the leveling up this jig. At this point, you need the outer shoe part of the jig to be level with that of the steel bar that rides on the rubber. It's only here that the router sits, so this part has to be parallel to the work surface. For the remaining two steel bars, the height is not that important. So to level the two outside steel bars, I placed some washers until I got it level. In my case, I needed two on the outer one and one on the inner side. Next step is drilling the holes on the steel bar and for this I used a step drill bit. And now I used a countersink drill bit to sink in the screw heads. And oh, in case you didn't know, this jig is part of Fixed Fingers Wood Jigs 21 Challenge. Now with the plywood base cut, let's look at attaching the steel bars and washers to it. As a recap, the outer shoe has two bars and two washers to account for the thickness of the track. The steel bar on the rubber has one set of washers and the two inner steel bars tightly hug the rail in the middle. This is what that holds the jig at 90 degrees to the track and is the most crucial part of the jig and you need to get this correct. Now let's check it one more final time to see that it's parallel. 
The washers get attached to the steel bath with some CA glue. To get the alignment in place, I use some double sided tape. Place these two inner steel bars firmly against the ridge. Do not allow any wiggle room at all. Make sure that this steel bar is perpendicular to the edge. It's at this point that I forgot to raise the height of the inner steel bars. This is because they need to firmly grip on the top side of the ridge and they don't have to touch the bottom of the track. A few washers gave that temporary extra height. I made sure that the plywood base was perpendicular to the track with a 12 inch square. So this is how the bottom of the jig looks like. And now let's test how freely this contraption moves. Now let's position the router on the jig. Mine has got two through screw holes and I'll be using that to fix the router onto the jig. Next step is to cut out the hole for the router bit. For that, I stuck some painter's tape on the collet and used a marker to draw an outline. I then used a hall saw to cut it out. Next, all the edges got a round over. And some final sanding with 180 grit. So I plan to create a small shelf using dados for my assorted screws and I thought this would be a great project to test out this jig. So on this plywood shelf I marked out the positions with a square where the dados has to go in. The shelf dividers will sit inside these grooves. I'm using an 18mm router bit and this will match the width of the shelf. The only thing you have to do is to align the far tip of the router bit on the line drawn on your workpiece. And this is important that you have to do this on either edge of the workpieces. 
In a future video, we can create an adjustable scales to help with this. I knew it would work, but the results still surprise me. The cut looks absolutely perfect. Now, if you're worried about the thickness of your jig, there's always this extra adapter that you can use, which will give you that extra length. Now this is how the shells will fit inside the screws, absolutely perfect. Now do let me know what you think about this jig. I think this could be a YouTube first in using steel bars but then again it may not be. Now Anthony from Ace Woods have also released a router jigs video which also has a track part built in but in a different way. And I also think Matt from Badger Workshop also has a similar video. Either ways if you haven't subscribed please consider subscribing and thanks a lot for watching, thanks.